Welcome to another edition of Talking Models. Today we're continuing our look at Blackheart Models wall hangers. Up today is a blast from space. The thing from another world. Sculpted by Joe Simon and currently available through Blackheart Models. I'll have the contact information for George Stevenson in the description of this video. This he uh, re-released, I believe it was last year, and you get the bottom half of this. It used to be available just as the head. Now he added the body and the hand, a must-have. Just want to talk a little bit about what I did with him today, and uh, maybe you can recreate the same thing. Who knows? It was started with uh, priming it with automotive gray primer, a light gray primer, and the next step for me was pulling out this beautiful uh, black primer from Stylerez from Badger Models. This Badger product is amazing. Their primers just spray beautifully through the airbrush. I bought a Badger Vega, which is like a 0.5 needle. This stuff blows through like a charm. No more clogging. Put it in, shoo, covered the whole thing with this. And that gave me my deep base coat. And then, of course, from there, the fun begins. I'm going to start with the bottom half of his uh, coat, his spacesuit, if you will. Over the black, I come in with one of my favorite things to play around with is, I know I got it here somewhere, is this um, iridescent blue from Garage US Colors. Contact Jesse. Pick up this whole set of iridescent colors. You will not be sorry. I started spraying the whole thing with this iridescent blue. Now, normally with iridescent paints, you'll just uh, thin it down a little bit and just do about 12 inches and just miss the whole piece and it gives it that different hue of blue. But if you get closer with your airbrush, you get this effect. So I sprayed the whole thing with iridescent blue. And then what I did from there is I came in with another blue which was, now I'm switching over to the Badgers, and it was this color here, it's called Nocturnal Blue. I took that color and just start lightly misting that over the iridescent. So I just kind of went back and forth with it. You know, just misting back, you know, a good 12 inches, just kind of mist over the whole piece. And you want to punch some of the highlights of the, uh, spacesuit there with the blue so you can uh, capture some of the uh, folds in there that Joe uh, sculpted. And then of course when you're done with that, it was a mixture of things for me with it. What I did is I came in with uh, After Midnight Blue from the Freak Flex Badger line. Combinations of that uh, for shadowing and of course transparent black. You can get this from Comarts uh, from Awada. Beautiful stuff. I use this a lot for shading. If you watch my earlier videos, that's all I talk about. So it was back and forth process of the two of those colors until I was happy with what I had. Now for parts of the shirt that you see exposed on the body part of this, that was accomplished with coming in with uh, Graduous Colors Neutral Gray. And I basically just started spraying over the black, not really heavy, but just kind of misting on the two spots that you see. Then of course you come in with the transparent black and you uh, hit the shadows and so you can build up the folds and the shadows in the shirt. And that was all I did with that. The iridescent blues, as you can see, really makes it pop. It gives, to me, a spacey look. And of course he's from space, so boom. Now for his uh, neck piece there, over the black, I uh, listed one of my other favorite colors from Freak Pluck Badger and that is Near Black. And that was uh, just sprayed over it. And then, of course, shadowing with the transparent black. Now, on to the thing from another world. Over the black, uh, lots of different stuff going on with him. Uh, the first initial color that I sprayed him with was, from the Badger Freak Flex, was Arterial Blue. That was my base coat for the skin. So, of course, I sprayed that on the head. I sprayed that on the hands. Now the fun begins. The process of bringing out different hues of blue on his skin. 
I've seen them done in green, which is normally all the things from another world that I have on the other side of the man cave are green. This one I wanted to go with a blue hue, so that's what I did. So once you get that going, then you come in with uh, one of my other favorite colors is the, um, which is it here, arterial blue. This is just a, a fixia blue, I'm sorry. This is a just a, I don't know if you can see it, just a beautiful blue. And that was done with just starting misting it all over. Of course, you hit the highlights, tops of the nose, the brow, the forehead, fingers, everywhere that you see, the ears, everywhere you just start kind of hitting the highlights with that asphyxia blue until you get the whole piece uh, basically misted over. Don't go too heavy. Let your first coat of blue show through some. Then you start uh, shading in. And for the shading on this, normally I would use transparent black which I just hit on some areas very lightly on the crevices, things of that nature. But I tried something different. I took this uh, After Midnight Blue from Badger and I just started using that for the crevices on the hands and the face. And I was actually kind of surprised uh, of the results of that. You can thin it down, but I just shot it straight out of the airbrush. I just used my uh, Extreme uh, 105 and when I got in for the really small details of it, I switched over to my uh, Badger Chrome and got in there really tight. And believe it or not, this stuff is amazing. I've not had a clog in any either brush. I've even shot this through a Soltar 2020. Mixed results, just a drop of uh, extender and phew, it was done. And it was fine. But on the other brushes, if you have an Awada or any of those, I'm sure it'll spray right through for you. So I was going back and forth with the colors and then it's a process. You just keep going back and forth. Then I came back in with my final blue was the Aphyxia blue and just kind of touched up all the highlights. For his veining, I got that after midnight blue again. I came in and just got in with the uh, chrome and I just punched, follow all the veining. There's so much detail Joe has in here. And I just kept punching it in with that, punching it in with that. And then I tried to do something different with this, and I really was happy with the results. After I was looking at it, part of it, it was almost like the blues were screaming at me, and if you watch all my videos, you know I like calm, you know I like quiet since my injury. So I thought, you know what, this is just too much. So I tried something different, which I think different now, and so I pulled this colors out. I looked at my wall of paints, and I looked at this Comart color called Transparent Forest Green. And what I did with that is I decided to just to come in and I missed it, the whole head and the hands with it, to bring the blue down a little bit, but it added a greenish blue hue to the entire piece. This is nothing you want to do close. This is one of those, turn it around on your Lazy Susan, you practice your waltz, one, two, three, spin it, and just cover the whole piece. That quieted it down. So then I thought, I wonder what would happen if I took that same thing and went over the veining. So I did. I pulled out my chrome and just lightly went over all the veining with it and it just gave it this look that you see. It's got a bluish green look to it and I really like what was happening. And that was basically all the colors of his lip, his face. Now his lips, I used the After Midnight Blue, shot that with that and around his eyes, down in the bottom areas, I used uh, Transparent Mars Red, which is from Jesse at Graduous Colors. And I shot that under his eyes, and I shot a, just a hint of it over here on his fingers, just a couple splashes here and there. Just look at the piece and just let your mind go. Just do it. But I concentrated heavily around the eye area. And then the lips, again with that blue, I thought it was a nice contrast. And then I just quieted it just a little bit with that transparent black. And that took care of his uh, face and his hands. Now for his uh, pieces of uh, sprouts or whatever those are and his fingernails, over the black, I enlisted Rotten Tooth Tan, which is one of my favorite colors from Badger out of this line of Freak Flex. Shot all that area with that. Then it's a matter of just dirtying it up. So I went over to Jesse at uh, Graduous Colors and did the transparent dark brown. 
and just started dirtying things up a little bit. Then you come back in with that rot tooth tan and just hit the points of the of the stubs and the fingernails and it's done. Now on to the eyes. I've toyed with different things I wanted to do with his eyes. I chose to go almost like a cat eye color, which is what you see here. And it was fun. It just it just jumped out at me. And so I'll tell you what I did. On his basic um, eye color for the whole eye area was bleach bone tan from the Badger Freak Flex uh, line. Put some of that in my uh, chrome, airbrushed it in. Come in with your uh, Mars Red, of course, and go along the bottom of the eye area. And that gives you that nice little red line that you see on your eye if you pull your face down there and see it. Then it was just a matter of uh, pulling out this color. I just tried Got Ill Green from the Badger. And I just airbrushed that in. First light, and then I built it up a little bit. And I got as I got closer to the center, I got a little closer for the different greens. And that is what I did ended up doing with his eyes. And it just, uh, it's simple, it's quick, but it's effective. As you can see, it just gives it that spacey look I guess. Then for the pupil of course you just find the center of the eye and then what I usually do is I take my uh, paintbrush, dip it in some black paint and I always start with just a crescent. I find the center where I want the eye, draw a little crescent on each side. Once that looks right then I just gently follow it around in a circle then I fill in the center. And then what I like to do is I'll come in with my uh, pastels, take some black, feather the pupil, feather the outer of the eye, just kind of, you know, dab it around, dab it around, and it gives you that transition from the eye into the uh, pupil area, and like your real eye looks. Just do that with a pastel. You can do it with an airbrush, too, on a piece this big. Just be careful, because it could go, and then you start, you know, it's a mess. It's a train wreck. So with a pastel, as David Fisher said way back to Cheap Man's Airbrush, you can come in and just feather it in naturally. And then, of course, I like to always do in the pupil itself, just take some pastel and just gently do a circular motion, blow the excess, and it just, it does the job. It really does. And that's really all I did with his eyes. And that's all I did with the thing from another world. This is a beautiful piece, available through Blackheart Models. George Stevenson is a stand-up guy with a stand-up product. He offers money back on his products. I don't think anybody's ever asked for it. I know I haven't. I just keep opening my wallet and giving them my money, don't I, George? But in the end, you have a beautiful piece for your collection. And from, to me, one of the best sci-fi movies out there, The Thing from Another World. So that's all I did with this guy. If you got any questions, please hit me up on this channel. Share this channel and subscribe to this channel. Right now we're in the middle of uh, looking at Blackheart models and their wall hangers and lots of great stuff and I'll give you a little bit of what I did with each one and give you the information so you can get yourself one and add it to your collection. So thanks again for stopping into Talking Models and I appreciate your support and I appreciate you watching my uh, videos. Have a great day today and may God bless your day.